beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed It's good to have us here again and tonight we're going to be considering something that i consider very very serious and i like our hearts to be opened as we trust god to bless us hallelujah there's one thing that i know for sure that we are changing and we are rising from glory to glory and a day will come when we will become fit to carry this banner of the kingdom across the nations. And in that day we will not be small. The least among us will be as mighty as David. Hallelujah. It's always challenging when you are through the period of training. There is no comfort about training. You are built, you are equipped, you are trained, you are pruned. But when God is done with you, he will present you as a masterpiece. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I've been thinking for a while, and um, what I want to talk about tonight is a very serious issue. And... Um, I think that it has plagued the body of Christ for too long and I trust that God will grant us grace. It's not a teaching we can exhaust tonight. Wherever we stop, we'll stop and pray. Hallelujah. When I began my walk with God, I knew from the first time, volume Mike, that There was a difference between just being a nominal Christian, Sunday to Sunday Christian, Bible study Christian, and one who has a passion, a desire, and a resolve to seek the Lord and to pursue him with everything. I saw what looked like Christianity, but I was not satisfied. And I knew that there had to be more. And I began to explore. I read the books of great men like Watchman Nee. I read materials of people like Peter Tan. I read the books of Kenneth Hagin. I studied God's generals, revivals. In a bit to find out that spiritual ingredient that is responsible for a life of fire. For a life that is not cold at all. Hallelujah. And I discovered a few things and I'll be sharing some of them with us tonight. Hallelujah. In my opinion, I think that the 
the greatest disaster that can happen to a man is not um, is not sickness. In fact, it's not even demonic oppression. As bad as these things are, I think that in my opinion, the greatest disaster that can happen to a man is that you walk in error or you do not press through spiritual things to attain the full stature of that which can be available for you in the spirit. I once heard the story, I think it's a popular story in the Christian faith, about a man who boarded a ship and part of that ship there was a package for his meal. Have you heard that story? And the man was more than grateful to get into the ship. And for days, he was scrounging the little um, food that he held. And his table was vacant. And when he was almost dying, he was told that there had been provision for more. This is how it is with many believers. We do not know that there can be more, that our Christian experience can become richer. That we can become a lot spiritual than we are. And, and that which I seek to teach tonight will help us to understand this. So that we do not just get born again and stand at the gate of the kingdom and not press deeper. Hallelujah. Now according to scriptures, please write. The Bible reveals to us spiritually speaking that there are three categories of people, three types of man as far as it has to do with our walk with God. The Bible reveals to us clearly that at any given point in time you will find three kinds of people. Number one is what the Bible calls the natural man. The natural man. Number two the Bible calls this second kind of man the carnal man. The carnal man. Number three, he calls the third kind of man the spiritual man. And this is very interesting. Please follow me. So the Bible tells us that when God is speaking, through the word, he's speaking to three kinds of people. There are words that are directed to natural people. There are words that are directed to carnal people. There are words that are directed to spiritual people. And I believe that one of the challenges in the body of Christ is that we have not been accurately taught what I call the path of spiritual progress. The transitions from the natural man, the exact spiritual requirement that it takes for you to leave the realm of a natural man to the next phase. And that when you are in that second phase, many of us have not been taught exactly the spiritual pathway that transforms men from being carnal to being spiritual indeed. Hallelujah. And I truly am convinced that part of the reason why many believers are not strong in the spirit and cannot do much for the kingdom is because they have not been taught the spiritual pathway that transits men from being carnal to being spiritual indeed. Now, it's very sad that we don't agree over many things in the body of Christ. And we just thank God for his grace and his faithfulness. I think that one of the things that we all agree over in the body of Christ is the condition of being born again. If you confess Jesus Christ, you confess, you believe that God raised him from the dead, you are saved. 
every sect, every denomination believes that and there is no argument about that. The moment that you satisfy that condition, you are accepted across every denomination. But after that, we almost don't agree on anything again. And so there has been confusion through the years as to the exact path of spiritual progress. Hallelujah. And tonight, the teaching is an attempt to bring us into that understanding. I truly believe that this holds the key to our deeper and our richer work with God. I read a book by a man who was acclaimed to be the 21st century prophet, a man called A.W. Tozer, The Pursuit of God. Powerful book. These were men whose dimensions of spiritual understanding was amazing. I have read many books. I have been built by so many people in the body of Christ. But there are certain people that their teachings and their spiritual paradigm has left a mark upon my life that will never be erased. Their understanding about God is so accurate. When you study their writings, you know that these people encountered God. Hallelujah. There are so many books in the body of Christ attempting to answer different questions about the pursuit of God. And the challenge is that, you see, when hunger meets error, it becomes a very unfortunate thing in the spirit. There are many believers who are hungry. We come to God, we come to church, and we say, I am thirsty. Lord, reveal more. You see, when you are hungry, you are like a baby whose mouth is opened. Anything that can fill you, you will take it and swallow it sincerely. Hallelujah. And many of us, that's the journey that begun the error that we have come into. We, have, we delved into it sincerely. When we got born again, there were probably no good Christian groups and fellowships around us to build us accurately. And so everything that looked like light, we ran to it and we poured our lives to receive it. And that little that we had is what we are holding on to today. But the unfortunate part is that some of what we received is not the accurate truth. So I sincerely pray from the depths of my heart that God will open our eyes so that our spiritual progress will be accurate and that at the end of our journey we will not have regrets as to why we did not attain the full stature of being spiritual men. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And so we have learned a lot of things. And um, I have seen that there is a cancer that is eating believers up. And that cancer in one word is called the flesh. It's a cancer that has been responsible for the downfall of many mighty men. Please open your heart tonight because the Lord is going to talk to you very seriously. Hallelujah. Everyone say the flesh. We're going to examine what is this spiritual cancer that is able to impede people and stop them from becoming spiritual. Grant us grace in the name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all I know. Search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for
for you. If you know the song, just sing it one more time. Come and make my heart your home. Come and be everything I am and all I Search me through and through till my heart becomes a home First Corinthians 2 from verse 14 verse 14 in fact let's start from verse 13 First Corinthians 2 let's start from verse 13 which things also we speak not in the words of man's wisdom that man's wisdom teacheth but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. 14. Everyone read. One to read. Stop. So the Bible tells us there is a man called what? The natural man. But the natural man cannot receive what? The things of the Spirit. Why? For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because spiritual things are spiritually discerned. Are you following me now? So, this is the first kind of man the Bible seeks to explain to us. He is called the natural man. And the Bible gives us certain traits. It doesn't leave us in confusion to guess who that man is. It says the natural man is one who has not yet sustained the capacity to understand spiritual things. They are foolishness unto him. He cannot know them because he has not been quickened to discern spiritual things. In one word, the natural man is one who has not met Jesus Christ. The natural man is what we call the unbeliever. I don't want to use that word because there are Christians that are still unbelievers. Hallelujah. So the natural man is one who has not met the Lord Jesus Christ. He has not come to the cross. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart Rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight. And now. I am happy all the way. At the cross. At the cross. Where I first saw the light. And the burden of my heart rolled away it was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day so the natural man is one who has not truly had the encounter of regeneration the word regeneration comes from the word regene. To recode you again. Regene. It's a new encoding. A changing of your spiritual configuration. Hallelujah. That's the first kind of man. And the Bible says for those kinds of people, there is nothing spiritual that ever makes sense to them. Hallelujah. They consider the faith work foolishness. They consider every spiritual activity foolishness. Some of us were like that before Christ found us. Alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. The commonwealth of Zion. Hallelujah. Everything that was of God was, an, it was a thing of mockery. We laughed at spiritual things. This man 
has an eternal destiny. The name of the place is hellfire. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Even if this man has been in church all his life, even if his father is a pastor, even if they baptized him in water, for as long as he has not met Jesus Christ, he is going to hell if he dies. Is there any confusion about that? So that we can move forward. Any confusion? The natural man has an eternal destiny. He is going first to hell and will later be relocated to the lake of fire. Hallelujah. That means if you are here and you have not met Jesus Christ, I wish it were a lie, but it's true. You are going to hell. If you don't repent, there is no other way to say it. I'm, I'm very sorry. I would have said you will go to a place that is not nice. It would have been a nice way. But let me tell you the truth and take me seriously. The Bible says this. I am the way. I am the truth. Can we get back to the basics of Christianity? I am the line. Not your pastor. Not your prophet. Not anointing oil. Are you getting what I'm saying? Placing an anointing oil on you does not make you a Christian. Soaking you in water, in baptism, does not make you a Christian. I, I, is somebody hearing what I'm saying? Because we need to redefine the condition for true salvation. A prophet of God speaking a word over you to say your sins are forgiven does not take you to heaven. Hello? I want all of us to get to heaven. So I want us to probe so that if you belong to this category and your conviction about your being saved is because of some of these things I'm saying. Let's clean up the air so that you will know. There is what we call, they used to teach us in Sunday school called assurance of salvation. Did they teach you? Not salvation. Assurance of salvation. That you can know that if the trumpet sounds today, by the way, there is a real trumpet and it will sound. Let's be careful as we progress spiritually and we seek to edit some of these things out. I hear men of God who speak and say there's nothing like the book of life. You know that statement? Write my name in the book of life. Yeah, forget it. There's nothing like that. <laughs> we will know one day but I can tell you there is a book of life. The Bible says books were opened and another book, a master book was opened and the name of that book, it didn't leave us to any theological guessing. It said the name of that book is the book of life and whosoever's name, pastor, apostle, koinonia member, prayer band member, revivalist, whosoever's name, was not found in that book. The Bible tells you that you are cast into the lake of fire. It's as simple as that. What's that man's song? Is your name in the book of life? Serious question. Is your name? Sing it. Is my name? See, let me tell you, you know, there are many believers who think that your confidence is equal to salvation. I won't go to hell. I'm going to heaven. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. If you are not saved, brothers and sisters, hear me. There is a name for you. The Bible calls you what? The natural man. This is not my message. I'm just digressing to press it in. So that you will know and you will care. Brothers and sisters, I know that we have been taught not to scare people with the revelation of judgment. That there is judgment day. Don't scare people. So that their coming to Christ will not be out of fear. But the only issue is that it is true. 
Brothers and sisters, listen to me. Heaven and earth will pass away. But not one word, not one word will fail. I really want us to truly, truly, before we even progress, examine our salvation. The Bible says to examine ourselves so that you are sure that if Jesus comes today, he will make heaven. If you know right now that if the trumpet sounds, you are going to heaven, stand up. If you are not sure, no problem. I'm serious. We are not playing games in this place. Please, you know that we are very serious. If you are sure that if the trumpet sounds right now, right now as we speak, you are going, you know we can fake it. Hallelujah. That if the trumpet sounds now, right now, Together, we are going to be with Jesus Christ in the air. That is one of the greatest assurance. You are sure you are going to graduate, but that is inferior to your eternal destiny. You are sure you are going to get married. You are sure you are going to be healed. You are sure you are going to be delivered. But brothers, you are even sure you will be successful. But can I be sincere with you? If you are not sure of your salvation, it's time to deal with it. And I'm going to talk to you. I will tell you what the condition to make heaven is. Please and please, I owe you that responsibility under God. Thank you for giving to the Lord. Keep standing. I am alive. That was changed. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am so in the course of ministering. I have had the privilege to stand before people a few minutes before they died. I have had the privilege to comfort families that have been bereaved. Some families of members here. Some families around that I'm connected to. Hallelujah. I've had the opportunity to hold the phone and hear families cry as their loved ones pass on. I've had the opportunity to look at people for the last time. I've had advanced knowledge where God told me this person is not going to make it. He's going to die. The Bible says if our hope is only in this life, we are of all men most miserable. If you've never thought about this thing this year, I want you to think about it for one minute. Jesus Christ is truly coming back. Please, in case you have been told that it will not happen, let me guarantee you there is an event that is going to happen in this earth. And every prophecy, every single prophecy that needs to, be, to come to pass for the coming of Jesus Christ has been fulfilled. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please take it seriously. Every prophecy. There are people who have had visions of the coming of Christ. There are people who have had visions. I'm just reminding you that there is more to this life. This physical life that you see. And as you walk up and down your daily activity, if you are not sure that if Jesus Christ comes, we will be caught up. Let me tell you how it will happen. Please sit down. Everybody open your Bible. First Thessalonians, please. Paul had a revelation of what is going to happen and I'm going to show you. First Thessalonians 4. We are talking about the natural man. As far as I'm concerned, this is the most important thing. The natural man should know.
First Thessalonians 4 from verse 13. 4 verse 13. Please let's hurry up so that we can beat time. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for salvation. Everyone look up. It's projected. Paul is talking to the church in Thessalonica. He said, but I would not have you to be ignorant. That means part of the revelations of the kingdom Paul wants us to have is the knowledge about how the coming of Christ is going to be. Brethren, so he's speaking to believers, concerning them which are asleep, that's those who have died, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so also, which sleep in Jesus, God will bring with him. Verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. So Paul is not speaking his opinion. He's speaking by the word of the Lord. That which we are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord. That means the day that Jesus Christ is going to come, there will still be people who will be alive in the earth. Are you getting me? Not everyone is going to have died as in gone to the grave. So he's giving us, Paul is painting a picture on how the rapture will be. Verse, verse 16. For the Lord himself, for who? The owner of the earth, the Lord himself, shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel. Now, which of the archangels we are not told exactly. But the Bible tells us Paul was speaking that on that day Jesus himself will descend from the heaven of heavens. And will come upon this very physical earth. And it says there will be a shout. The voice of an archangel. And with the trump of God. That means a trumpet is going to sound. A shofar will blow. And the first thing that will happen. In that great ceremony. Is that the dead in. Everybody say. Dead in. In one more time, so it's not only those who are alive in Christ, a man can also be dead in Christ that he served God with his whole life and he believed and accepted the lordship of Jesus Christ. I bring you a message of hope for those of you who have lost loved ones. Brothers and sisters, if they gave their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, there is a name for them. The Bible says they are dead but in Christ. That means a day will come, there will be a glorious reunion. Hallelujah. So the dead in Christ will be the first to rise. 17. Then, we which are alive and remain shall do what? We shall be caught up with them in the clouds. Let me explain to you what will happen. All of this that you see will happen in split seconds. Hallelujah. Split seconds of earth's time. It will be faster than the speed of light. There will be that sound. There's no time I would have shown you that unbelievers are not going to hear that sound. Because he, Jesus gave us a revelation. He said, my sheep hear my voice. That means if you didn't hear it, it was not for you. It's as simple as that. Is that in your Bible? <laughs> the Bible says two people will be lying down. Two roommates in Ribadu will be lying down. And one will be taken and leave the stubborn roommate who is not paying attention to the things of God and thinks I don't care. 
you get up and say, ah, ah, where did my roommate go to? We have checked out of this time. A day is coming. The greatest catastrophe that has happened to the earth is not all of the tsunami and the disappearance. Imagine how many pilots are going to go. You think they will stay? Once you hear that sound, you are leaving. The sound does something to your spirit, man. At once, all the graves, that was the revelation that was adumbrated in Ezekiel 37. People who have been maimed, Jews that were killed by Adolf Hitler, bones that have been scattered, Matthias that were beheaded at once. That sound that sound will do a quickening. The same way Christ was raised from the dead, the Holy Ghost will demonstrate his sovereignty at its best to resurrect every man who is dead in Christ within a split second. And they will rise up with glorified bodies. Watch this. And that time, some of us who are alive, I pray that it happens during koinonia. While we are seated, maybe we are worshipping. All of a sudden, I will leave my Bible for you. My phone. Hallelujah. We will leave the drums, keyboard. There will still be a few people seated. And they wonder what is happening. Those who laugh at us right now and laugh at our fanatism for the kingdom and think that life is all about money and cars and houses huh? and marriage and will not give priority to spiritual things. I am not telling you a fairy tale. We are closer to the coming of Christ right now than before Koinonia started. And it's a very good news. If it's a bad news for you, you are the natural man. It is not supposed to be a bad news. When people die, we write transition. It's a transition. So we who are alive, all of a sudden, this body that is limited, suddenly, immortality is perfected upon this body. We will no longer carry this material. The clothes that we will wear will no longer be removed. There will be robes. They are called garments of praise. They are garments in the spirit. And we will join the king of kings. His feet is not going to touch the earth. He will stand in, He will come with his own cloud. His own realm. Mm. And all of a sudden you will see your grandfather we we'll see all the missionaries that were wounded in Nigeria. The ones who were killed in Calabar. The ones that were killed in different crises. We see all kinds of things. And together we will arise. And for the first time you will look at the earth from heaven's perspective. And truly see that it is shadow. Every time we are on the air, I have the privilege to look down. And you see houses like, you know how children make toys. Whereas somebody will say, I must build this thing. If not, I won't trust you. From heaven's perspective, people steal so that they can build that little object. And you see people moving like ants. That is from, from a view in the sky. Imagine how God looks at everyone. And he said, if I don't build this house, oh Lord, you wait. And he's saying, are you not wise? Have you not heard that there are mansions in heaven? It was not a prophetic statement. There are real mansions. There are people who have gone there. There are mansions. There are mansions. We will be caught up. We will leave all the countries. They will elect themselves. They will fight themselves. There will be a lot of vacancy. ABU Senate. No more admission. 
Some of your lecturers will come for lecture that morning only to find out that CNN will carry the most shocking news ever seen in human history. This day will put it new Nigeria, punch this nation, massive disappearance of people. All of a sudden, it will occur to those you preach to who laughed at you that this, this person said this. By the time they are saying it, we will wave this earth goodbye. I look forward to that time. It's a very good experience. Do you know what it means? That you are relieved from this body of sorrow. No thinking about all of these kinds of things. It's making some of you afraid. Because preachers have run away from it. Because they are not sure they are going to heaven. Don't talk about it. We are already going. We must talk about it. You talk about your house. You are hoping for break or strike or something so that you will run home. This world is not my home. Remember that country music. Powerful songs. Right now we dodge them. We sing all kinds of songs. I must make it. God is holding my hand and I must make it. These are the kinds of songs we write. Nothing at all that reminds us that we are leaving this realm. This is already a message. For someone, this is, your, this is your word from the Lord tonight. That you should sit down and think about your life. I can stand as a preacher and deceive men. But on that day, all of a sudden you will see bishops and pastors still in the earth. And the members will say, Pastor, he say, please don't. The Bible will once again become the bestseller. Because everybody, whether you believe in Christ or not, it will no longer be an instrument of devotion. It will be the roadmap for the next level of prophecy. Every church on earth will be jam-packed. At that point, every business will close their shop by force. When there is nobody you must, whether you are selling tire, whether you are an iron bender, whatever you are doing, you will pack up your business and run to church. And everybody will sit in church hoping that that is the place where the rapture will happen, whereas it has happened. All of a sudden, within 24 hours, a strange man will appear on your TV. And you say, world, calm down. It's true that some people have gone, but let there be peace. And the Bible calls him the Antichrist. Not an Antichrist. He is the Antichrist. At that point, the Bible says, men will run and beg the mountain to fall on them. You are afraid of bicycle hitting your leg. But the Bible says even death will run away. Death will say, I've tried. That's it. Mission accomplished. Yes, read your Bible. Men will run to the mountain. People will carry knives to kill themselves and will not die. The Bible says the, in Revelation, I thought we'll be able to do it this year, but we may do it. We may not be able to do it this year. Eschatology, there is a whole teaching on it. A four-part series on the end time. Hallelujah. I'm just giving you, am I boring you? <laughs> you better say no because this cannot be boring when your eternal destiny is tied to it. <laughs> Some of us, this is a revelation. God has been talking to you. Calm down with the issue of wanting to make it and think about your eternal destiny. Hallelujah. Churches will still be full. There will still be men of God doing live telecasts, whereas the rapture has happened. Some will even be making altar calls. I mean what I'm saying, and I'm very serious about it. Yet there are some people, some quiet mothers, who have been praying, like Anna, the prophetess, looking forward to the consolation. When that happens... Some of the cleaners in our churches who we have disrespected. Before you know it, they will leave the rag for you there. 
and leave. Some of the house helps we have ill-treated, they will go and leave all of us. The door of CBN will be wide open to go and pack all the money. All the security people, the banks will be there. The bulk room will be open. Go and pack. And then you will hear that there is a new technology for buying and selling. The Antichrist will introduce a new code of conduct. Joshua Selman! For where? Let's go. And I will turn there. And I'll see Lawrence. I'll say you made it. Oh, I pray that you will turn and see your father, your mother. And you say, where is my sister? And there will be joy. No matter how antisocial you are. There must be joy. Because you will turn and see someone. And you will suddenly turn and see the person who led you to Christ but has died. And you will look at him. And we will all be young. No competition of I'm fine, you are not. We will all be fine. Leave this body with all the deficiencies that this realm brought for us. And will arise in a glorified body. Question. Will your father be there? Will your mother be there? Yes, you may be there. There are people in my life. I'm sorry to say it. I know they will not be there. Based on the truth of God's word. They died without Jesus Christ. Some of them. We had the privilege to talk to them. And they didn't take it seriously. And they died. There are people you spoke to. They didn't know that you were so close. And they didn't listen. And they died. With my mouth. Will I make it known. That's why we have to preach. From the rising of the sun. Right on till it's going down. I will sing. Of the mercies of the Lord. There will be churches. That more than half of the congregation. Will be dancing and singing praise and worship. And they are not gone. Because they never took seriously. The issue of salvation. They thought it's a basic thing. There will even be men of God. Sharing revelations. And all of a sudden they will find out. That the earth looks empty. The weight of the earth will reduce. Because people have left. Revelation says. That there was 30 minute silence in heaven. You know why? The, the shock in heaven. Because of the seven vials. That was about to be poured upon the earth. The Bible says one third of the vegetation of the earth. Will be destroyed. You were taught about ecosystems, right, in biology. Imagine what happens to the earth when one third of the vegetation is destroyed. It's not a prophetic statement. It will happen. No buying indomie until the mark of the beast is there. No nothing. No matter how you hide. We have GPS. What do they call it? GPRS. GPS, they will find you. No hiding. The question I want to ask you right now, again, is, are you going to make it? This is not to scare you. What then is the condition to make heaven? What condition transits you from being a sinner To being a righteous person in Christ. Romans chapter 8. Sorry, chapter 10. I'll begin to read from verse 8. Romans chapter 10, verse 8. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Here's the condition. 
that if thou shalt what? Confess. Not assume. Confess. Verbalize. With your mouth. The Lordship of Jesus Christ. And if you believe it, that means it is possible to confess what you do not believe. Is that true? So, you must first believe in your heart that this is true. Jesus came and died. He shed his blood for my sins. He was given as a propitiation, as an exchange. What I could not do for myself. Jesus came as the ransom, the lamb that shed his blood for my sins. He said, if you believe in the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, what is the, the result? Thou shalt be saved. Next verse. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and then with your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Has this happened to you? I know you have spoken. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I believe in you, I believe in you. I believe you died, I believe you died. And you are pinching people all around. The Bible says, do you believe in your heart? Was it a sincere statement? Do you truly believe that Jesus died? Do you believe that he shed his blood? He took your place in death that you may take his place in life. Do you believe that he defeated sin? He defeated Satan? He broke the power of sin. Do you believe that he offers you new life? And if you believe it, have you acknowledged it? If you have not done that, if Jesus comes today, you are going to hellfire. Hallelujah. So before we continue, I'm going to give us five minutes. And i like us to pray from the depths of your heart, every one of us, and say, Lord, I commit myself. Commit myself. I want to be sure that on this day, this decision is true in my life. Jesus, Son of God. Pray. I believe in you. I believe in you. I call you my Messiah, Jesus, Son of God. I believe in you. Pray from the depths of your heart. I believe that Jesus died. Jesus, Son of God. I believe in you. Oh, I believe. I believe in life and in death. This becomes my conviction. Jesus, Son of God. I may not believe many things about the Christian faith, but I believe this one. Jesus, Son of God, I believe in you. I believe in you. With my heart, I believe that Jesus died. Jesus, Jesus paid the price. I believe the truth of God's word. I believe that Jesus came. He was born of the Virgin Mary. I believe, I believe that he suffered. I believe that he went to the cross. I believe he hung on that cross for me. I believe that he was pierced with those nails for my sins. I believe he said it is finished. I believe he was buried and he went to hell and collected the keys of death hell and the grave i believe that on the third day he resurrected i believe that he's alive today and he offers me the gift of righteousness 
Oh, and I've received it by faith. Jesus, Son of God. Most important decision in your life when the road is called up yonder 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 When the road is called up yonder, when the road, when the road is called up yonder, when the road is called up yonder, in two minutes. I like you to cry for your family members that you know you know they are going to hell lift your voice and pray don't pretend it some of us our kind fathers are still going to hell when all is said and done when all is said and done your degree means nothing your prosperity means nothing when all is said and done when all is said and done there are some of our sisters going to hell brothers our relatives kind cousins well-meaning family members but as it is right now the truth of god's word is that they are going to hell pray for them Lord, save them. Save them. Save them. Hell is real. Heaven is real. Whether you believe it or not, Jesus is coming. Please pray for them in one minute. I know we've taken time, but this is too important. What then are we doing? Save their soul, oh God. Save their soul. Please pray for your father. Lord, let him not go to hell. Now that he's alive, there is still a chance. Pray for your drunkard brother. Lord, you have to do something about his salvation. Pray for your idol worshiping grandparents. Lord, they are kind. They love me. But they are going to hell. Save them, oh God. Are you praying? Let me tell you, this is all we do tonight. It is important. There is nothing that stops Jesus Christ from coming this night. The gospel of the kingdom is already being preached. There is nothing that stops Jesus Christ from coming tomorrow morning. hallelujah the last prayer point before we continue listen look at me i want to say something and i mean it from the depths of my heart there are some of you here the blood of your family members and your friends will be upon your head because you move around you know jesus and you love him but you are afraid and ashamed you don't want stigmatization how can me a fine girl be involved in preaching how can me a bubble? All right, they are going to die. That's the problem. It has nothing with you being a preacher. And let me tell you, 
the Bible tells us that the rich man was in hell and he saw Lazarus. They communicated. You will be able to see your father and your mother. They will look at you. You will look at your roommates. You will look at people. You will see them. Let me tell you the truth. And they are going to ask you. They will say, Femi, you saw this thing. You didn't insist. You even asked me out. Yet you never preached to me. You taught me about prosperity. You taught me. Many of us who are preachers here. The blood of many people will be upon our heads. We taught about dimensions of revival. We taught about divine health. Rema. We heal the sick. There were all kinds of demonstrations of the spirit. But they, we did not confirm whether our members are going to make it. We had building projects. Project 10,000. Excellence. There was table. You cut cake. We dress well in suit. But the question is, in the final analysis, are you preaching to anybody? There are some of you, you have never opened your mouth to talk to anybody. You can share about revelation. You can share about marriage. You can give koinonia messages. You are on Facebook. You are on Twitter. You have all kinds of things. God gave you an opportunity. You have recharge card. Let me tell you something. In 2000, and was it three or four? I used to do something. I will never sleep until I send text messages to at least 10 or 15 people talking to them about the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know them. I would just be calling numbers at random. I think that was when 2003, 4. That was when they started this GSM thing. I would just type in numbers at random and send. Just type a message about salvation. Not a condemning message, but a sincere message. There are some of you, you can make tracts. You are waiting until the day you become a Jew. Some of us, our Facebook pages have become platforms for, for gossiping and making all kinds of noise. Yet our loved ones are going to hell. You are interested in a relationship with a lady. You don't even know whether she's going to heaven or hell. All you know is she's fine. Continue. Hallelujah. And you are there. God gave you beauty. All kinds of guys are coming. You don't want to fall your hand. And you never talk to them about Jesus Christ. Some of you get up and you allow people. You come for coin on and you just say, I'm going. And they say, okay. And it never occurs to you that if you come for koinonia and the trumpet sounds, you will never see them again. You have no ministry if souls are not being saved. You are not doing ministry. I don't care what you are doing. Our number one assignment is part of our mission statement. Massive salvation of souls. Not salvation of souls. Massive salvation of souls. When I see a man that needs to hear about Jesus and God grants me the grace, I will speak. If I cannot speak, I will do something. What is wrong with you going to the studio and going to pay 10 or 20,000 naira and just do a salvation message? You are not the name of any ministry. You say, what is the name of my own ministry? Must you have a ministry? Just go to the studio and do it a 20 minutes presentation of salvation. Or you and your friends contribute two, 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 two thousand, five or ten people, and just put it as an MP3. We put all kinds of useless things. Um, this is Joshua Selman. I'm about to release my debut track, Nonsense. When there is room to preach the gospel first. How many of our gospel songs? carry direct salvation messages. Have you, seen, have you discovered the way we are quietly deviating and nobody wants to attack the salvation thing? It looks old school, right? It doesn't look very attractive. So i rather push success. I'm not against success, brothers and sisters, but I repeat, 
if Jesus comes, nobody is carrying a kachi out of this realm. Are you, are, are, you, are you aware of that? You are not going to carry any shirt. All of these things, you will drop it behind. Whatever you have in your account is useless. You won't carry your awards. You won't carry your degree. You won't carry your marriage certificate. Woe is me if I preach not the gospel. This is what drives me every day. I have dedicated my life, not just for ministry, to turn the hearts of many to righteousness. I don't care how much I'm misunderstood. I don't care how old school I sound. When Jesus comes in the final analysis, some of you are fellowship escorts. Some of you are pastors. When was the last time you truly preached? Do you know that we graduate people from Bible school and they don't know what the gospel is? They know the keys to wealth. They understand marriage counseling. Conflict resolution. How to raise money for church. But they know nothing about winning souls. One more time before I continue. I've, this thing has touched my heart. This thing has touched my heart. Because this is the core. The pivot. The pivot. Of our Christian experience. If God makes you a millionaire. And nobody is getting saved as a result of your millions. You will eat your money the day the church is raptured. If God gives you a platform, you have your small fellowship, your group, and you just feel we are only five. I think everybody is born again. Don't make assumptions. That's why I respect Papa E.E. Adeboye. If he holds a meeting between him and his wife, I'm sure he will still make an altar call. No assumption. No assumption. We preach powerful messages. And at the end of it, we don't care whether people are saved or not. One more time. Put a fire in my spirit. Let my mouth not be silent as far as preaching the gospel. Telling people that Jesus died for them. And that there is judgment if they don't pay attention. Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Some of you truly, when you started out with God, you were very serious as far as soul winning is concerned. You didn't even know that there was anything called anointing. But now you know that there is anointing. I will use everything that God has given me for the gospel. Pray. Prosperity, grace, the knowledge of graphics, my knowledge of media, my beauty. Sister, pray. Tired of taking men to hell. Now I need to begin to take men to heaven. I will use my voice to sing. And I will keep singing until people come to Jesus Christ. Many of you need to repent on behalf of your groups and ministries. Open your mouth and ask the Lord for forgiveness. You've been doing a lot of activities, but they are not channeled towards soul winning. And you don't care. Open your mouth and pray. And say, Lord, my small fellowship in the village have not been preaching the gospel. I've been preaching many things. Not the gospel of salvation. Every other gospel is only useless or useful. When the gospel of salvation has been preached. Some of us have little groups. That we preach to occasionally. Where did you throw your evangelism zeal? It looked old school. And you've thrown it for something new. The Bible says ask for the ancient part. Please pray. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. 
Light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I just feel God wants us to stop here and press on this issue tonight. Carnal believers and the rest, we have to we'll take on that one. Hallelujah. Whether you are going to kneel down or lie down in the next 10 minutes, I'd like you to write the names of five people that were going to intercede for their salvation. If this is what we do tonight, go ahead and pray. Please cry to God. They must be saved. Man braba teke lebo ko soto balalalalabal. Raba teke pros ke de balalalabosh. The natural man. I'm crying now. Write it. There is no man that Jesus cannot save. For as long as there is life, there is hope. Where is all about you? It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. Please write it down. All about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, it's all about you, Jesus, Jesus. In the next five minutes, I'd like you to pray in tongues like your life depends on it and say, Lord, these five people must be saved. I must see them in heaven. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Whether you want to kneel down, cry, whatever it is, let there be a cry. They must be born again. Rabakata preske bete gede balararabash. Raka poshoto pekete le prekete le koto supa. My father will not go to hell. My father will not go to hell. My mother will not go to hell. Pray. Save my husband. Save my wife. Pray. When the trumpet sounds, I must see them in heaven. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. They must be saved. They may be non-Christians, but I travel 
they must be saved. Revelations 20. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The Lord is imparting a genuine passion for souls. Yeah. Revelations 20. From verse 10. Revelations 20, verse 10. Listen, listen. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets are, and shall be tormented day and night forever. Next verse. And I saw a great white throne. I saw it. I saw it. And he that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was no place found for them. Verse 12. I don't know what gospel you have been heard, you have been preaching. I saw the dead, small and great, commissioners and houseboys, presidents and bike men, first class students. And those who did not pass jam, I saw them. I saw them. They stood before God. Every man must stand before God. And the books were open. What books? Your faithfulness in evangelism. Your giving. For those who have taught you that your works of righteousness are not important. Here goes the Bible. The works of men will be tried by fire. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. Brothers and sisters, read the remaining part by yourself. One to read. And the dead were judged out of. That means there are things that are written. According to what? Next verse. And the sea gave up all the people who died by sea crash. And death and hell delivered all our uncles and aunties and politicians. It says, and they were judged, every man according to their works. 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. And the Bible says, this is the second death. Let me show you something. Is there another verse? Go ahead. Verse 15. Everyone read. And hold on. And what? Whosoever at that point, your status will not matter again. At that point, your English, your ordination will not matter. Your suit will not bail you out. He said, whosoever was not found, written in the book of life, there was no story, end of discussion, cast into the lake of fire. Whether it is your father, whether it is your mother, some of you, if you don't pray, you will watch your mother who gave birth to you. You will watch her as the Bible says, depart from me. 
and you will watch them cry to hell some of you will watch your uncles lift your voice and cry and say lord whatever it will take to stop them from going to this place of torment i cry tonight hey hey na 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 Raba capron de calababa baba. I love them too much. I love my mother. I love my father. I love my brothers. Yeah. Whosoever's name was not found in the book of life, be it a president, be it a governor. Whether you are a first class student, two one student, it will not matter again. It won't matter how many parishes you have. It won't matter how many rema you have. Hey, 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 hey. Whether you are a member of Koinonia or not, is irrelevant. I will stand for myself. You will stand for yourself. And I saw books open, and another book was open. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Intercede for them, Lord. Send angels, send angels to my house. Send angels, give them dreams, give them encounters with Jesus in their dreams. They must. Be born again. Yeah. 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 When all is said and done When all is said and done This is all that will matter yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Revelations 21 Verse 3 a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God verse 4 and God finally brothers and sisters a day will come when all is said and done in this life God will wipe away the tears the tears of mockery some people died out of cancer some died out of hiv some were martyred they were standing for jesus while they were killed the bible says on that day that tears the tears of mockery holy holy 
the Lord will wipe that tears. The tears of the pain that you have to go through on account of the gospel. That men will not like you. Some of you would have been married since if you were not standing for God. But because of your faith, the Bible says God will wipe that tears and there shall be no more death, no more obituary, no more pain, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. Listen. Listen. It's not enough that you are convinced that you will make heaven. I'm still saying it. We are going to pray. There are some of our loved ones, some of us come from backgrounds that are non-Christians. And some of our loved ones are still there. We are going to pray. And everyone will pray too. Give them divine visitations. Encounters with Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, if Jesus came to die, an encounter is not too much to force any man to give his life to Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Encounters. Appear to them in visions like Saul on his way to Damascus. Lord, they will not die. Give them encounters. Give them encounters. Give them encounters. Rakata pakata badosh. Pray. Change my father. Change my mother. Some of them vowed that they will never give their hearts to the Lord. I like you to pray. It can change. Some of them are traditional worshippers. Mention them by name. Mention them by name. Read your prayer request. Mention them by name. Mention them by name. Claim their salvation in the name of Jesus. Some of them are religious people. The truth is they are not born again. They are not born again. Some of them belong to sects that will take them to hell. Occultic sects. Pray for them. Give them an encounter. Hallelujah. hallelujah I'll never forget one of our sisters she was a member of the worship team hallelujah I'll never forget her touching testimony came from a completely non-christian background and she decided to give her life to Christ when she gave her life to Christ it was war and gradually gradually the lord started doing his thing in the family the brother gave his life to christ and then i think the mother and he was remaining the father and this lady would not give up i will never forget that night when she called me crying and jumping around chapel and said can you imagine my father my father gave his life to christ she was jumping see there are some hardened people you see. You know that humanly speaking, they will never be born again. Don't try the power of the Holy Spirit. Think of how you were. 
Some of you think of what God brought you out of. Then you will know that there is no man that God cannot change. There is no man. God has changed occultists. God has changed hardened criminals. Some of you, you know where God brought you out from. If God could change you, if God could change you, we are still going to pray. You are going to say, Lord, put your word in my mouth. Because some of you, it's just you don't know what to say. But we are going to cry. Lord, let no one's blood be upon my head on that day. Put your word in my mouth. And grant me the boldness to declare the gospel. Go ahead and pray. Put your word in my mouth. Pray. Deliver me from shame. Deliver me from my ego. Deliver me from embarrassment. Hey, hey, hey. Are you praying from the depths of your heart? You must start with your family members before you think of crusades and outreaches. Start with your family members. They must be born again. They must be born again. Rabata gada balada bosh, shombra dogo do balada bosh. Rapata kapreda gada balada bosh. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. There are many avenues, many avenues to turn the hearts of men to righteousness. Number one, the ministry of intercession. There are some of you who pray a lot, but all you are praying is, oh God, give me tea. God, give me bread. Add brew ban on the bread. That's, that's all our prayer. If, if, listen, if the scope of your Christian experience, there's, we'll do it another day. I really wanted to talk about the carnal man. And then we'll, there, there are scriptures that I prepare to touch. We can't, we can't do that. Our time is already gone. The slave to the flesh. That is the man of the flesh that can really not please God. That is another dimension. Maybe we'll consider that next week. Hallelujah. That you, you, you write the names of people and you just go into fasting for one day and it's not for yourself. How many of you have ever done that? To fast and it's not for yourself. If it's not for me, that's the flesh. That's the flesh. If it's not for my marriage, my, my lifting, my prosperity, Or that you go to prayer and say, Lord, you must save these souls. And you are not just pretending it. One thing that I know is that as much as God grants me grace and breath, no one's blood will be upon my head that day. No one will look at me and say, Joshua Selman, you had access to me, but you never spoke to me about Jesus. Do you know, listen, do you know what the, the, the scribes and the Pharisees said. They said, let his blood be on our head. Who taught them that principle? That the blood of a man can be upon the head of another. And that God would look and say, Ken, I gave you access. I gave you graces. And you ended up building an empire. MOG. They invited you to travel around the world. They gave you water, ushers around. And you never, you were not concerned about the souls of men. 
there are men who will carry the blood of others on their head. Hallelujah. Oh, I must preach. Necessity is laid upon me. Some of us, the only reason why we cannot, I'm not talking of condemning people, but I'm talking of being passionate enough to trust God. Tell them what Jesus did in your life. There are some of you, you have never invited anybody to church, not once, the way you are like this. You don't care. It's not an issue at all. Yet we sing and we say, Lord, I love you. Yet we sing and we say, someday I'm going home. The Lord is speaking to us tonight. The Bible says the harvest is wide, but the laborers are few. He said, pray ye the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers. When Jesus came, he gave his assignment a business-like attitude. He said, I must walk the walk of him that sent me. Hallelujah. We just came back from a trip. And when I came, I couldn't even rest just to do everything and to come here. Now, why all of this thing? Our flight was delayed. There were so many things. These guys have been tired. We left Benin Republic this morning by 5 a.m. in the morning. Headed to the airport, our flight was shifted. And I can justify and say, Kite, God, you too, you know. But Paul said the love. He said, I, Paul, a bond servant. It looks like I'm in slavery, but no one is forcing me. There is love that constrains me. Little inconveniences for some of us. Little inconveniences for the kingdom. And we complain. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not against comfort. But I'm telling you, if it is because you want to be comfortable that you allow souls to die and you don't make spiritual progress, their blood will be on your head. Tomorrow morning we're up teaching school of ministry students from there. We're headed to Zamfara. Coming back Monday morning straight into the counseling session. Why am I doing all this? Am I stupid or I don't know where a retreat center is? That I can just go and lie down and say, let me rest. What drives you, my brothers and my sisters? Please don't say you are a ministry. No. What is it that when you get up in the morning, truly, please take seriously what I'm saying. What drives you? What drives you? Power or fame? What drives your Christian experience? There are some of you, those around you, it's not like they are hardened. Nobody has preached to them. They've been coming to church. You know they are not born again. You know they are not born again. Religion is not being born again. If they are not saved, they are not saved. Period. It's time to talk to them and tell them, I, I want to talk to you. Is it too much to pay and invite them to a restaurant and talk to them about Jesus Christ? Can your 500 naira not go for the gospel? Will it kill you? Will it kill you? What is wrong with three or four of you coming? And just praying for three days. Just praying and fasting. No group, no ministry, no nothing. Just to pray for souls genuinely. Ask people to submit the names of their unsaved ones. And pray. After three days, that's all. Jesus said, if you do this to the least of my brethren. See, let me tell you. The day Jesus comes, we are going to be surprised. Because those you think are the greatest in the kingdom. You will be shocked. To find out that they are not the greatest. Some of us, the men of God that you think will be the greatest, you will be surprised that some of us who have just barely made heaven. Whereas there are people whose entire life, they don't have revelation, they don't have any rema, nobody's inviting them for any ministration. But their heart in life and in death has been committed towards the gospel. There are classmates of ours that have never heard about Jesus Christ. We are ashamed. 
Sometimes when I pass through ABU campus, I look at the campus and I nod my head. Things have changed. Things have changed. The fire. Many of us are afraid to talk to people about Jesus. Okay, agree that you cannot go for all the crusades and the rest. What of your family members? You grew up knowing your father drinking and smoking and bowing to a God. Have you ever said, Daddy, there's something I want to discuss with you. Say, my father that I know, as if you don't know the Holy Spirit too. What if I talk to him and he insults me? Is that the reason why you will not talk? What if I talk to him and he stops giving me uh, pocket money? What if I tell the brother that this relationship is not born again and let me talk to him about Jesus Christ? Won't it cost me the relationship? I want to marry. Okay, marry. There are some of us, as you are looking at me right now, even those you are in a relationship with are unbelievers. They are going to hell. You don't care. Who is he? He's a nice guy. Is he born again? And please, everybody is a sinner. If he's a sinner, he's a sinner. Your priority is not love. Your priority is salvation. Please hear what I'm saying. Because on that day, the Lord is going to ask you. Praise the Lord. One last prayer point. Lord, whatever I can do at this level, to contribute to the advancement of the kingdom and soul winning, reveal it to me. Whatever I can do, if you can't preach, you can sow seeds. Please pray. Everybody must do something. What can I do for my family? Do I need to organize a get together? Do I need to celebrate my father's birthday for him so that he will be saved? What can I do at this level? Do I need to buy a card? Do I need to write an article for my family members? Do I need to produce tract? What can I do at this level? Don't say I cannot do anything. With the grace you have, there's something you can do. Please pray. Lord, you gave me a voice. I can sing with it. You gave me wisdom. I can use that as a platform. Lord, you bless me with finances. I can release my wealth for the kingdom. Lord, you gave me a car. My car can be used for the kingdom. You gave me a barbing saloon. It can be used for the kingdom. You gave me a restaurant. It can be used for the kingdom. Reveal to me what I can do at this level it may not be much but let me contribute there's something i can do i can pray i can preach i can finance the kingdom Hallelujah. Listen to me. I can go on my knees and beg you. Don't make this just an emotional thing. It's easy to just feel emotional and just say, wow. Because I spoke about hellfire and rapture and books. It's easy for you to be threatened. And then just carry the euphoria. 
for one or two days and it dies back take this as a message God is giving you no matter what you have done in ministry if souls are not being saved you are wasting God's time hallelujah please rise up and lift if you wrote your prayer your request if it's in a book just lift it up I want to pray on it listen you are the first agent that will follow up these people don't just pray for an anonymous man of God to evolve from anywhere you are the man of God that God is authorizing tonight to start don't fear their faces I'm not saying you should go and do stupid things without zeal or with zeal and without knowledge just jump into people's houses and inconvenience them start with your family members your family members will not kill you at least you can start from there father we repent in any way we have trivialized the issue of soul winning and lord we know that this is in your heart and you decided to move us this direction We want your heartbeat to become our heartbeat. We want your cry to become our cry. We want your passion to become our passion. Put a piece of your desire for souls in our hearts. And let it be a fire that nothing in this life can quench. Oh, we desire you. We desire you. Put that passion lord i stretch my hands towards these names there are so many people who are going to hell whose names are written some of them are fathers some are mothers lord in the name of jesus we agree as a family of faith that beginning from tonight let there be strange angelic visitations strange angelic visitations Force them to go for crusades. May they go for meetings. May they encounter men and women of God. And Lord, we pray, especially for those who are not of the Christian faith. Lord, you know that humanly speaking, their minds are made up. But in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Angelic visitations. Encounters of Jesus Christ. As they sleep, they will see his face. As they sleep, they will see his face. In the name of Jesus Christ. As they sleep, they will see the cross. They will see the cross. It will follow them everywhere they go. We ransom their souls from the pit of hell. Lord, we will not stand in heaven and watch our loved ones enter that wide gate of hell we will stand and we will rejoice put a passion in us to win souls let it not just be a religious evangelical thing lord remind us that if we do not win these souls and we let them die that their blood will be upon our heads i pray for everyone I kill timidity from your life. Whatever makes you ashamed of the gospel, I don't care what it is, whether your inability to communicate well, your poor background, complex that you have about yourself, that, that, that limitation is swallowed up tonight in the name of Jesus. May my God give you utterance. May my God give you utterance. May my God give you confidence in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that you will not win souls and miss heaven yourself. I pray for everyone that the same way we are gathered in the earth like this, that is how we will see ourselves on that day. We will see ourselves and know ourselves. Therefore, I pray any manner of life represented here listen to me 
any manner of life that the devil is deceiving anyone into and making it look like it does not matter tonight that power of sin is broken over your life every association every wrong thing that can jeopardize your eternal destiny in the name of Jesus Christ receive grace to say no to every appearance of evil receive no to receive grace to say no to wicked and ungodly relationships receive grace to cut away from people who do not love God nor value his ways in the name of Jesus Christ and where you need to stand alone receive courage to stand alone where they mock you and say all kinds of things I release grace for you to still stand I pray for you from the depths of my heart that every weight every habit every attitude you know that can destroy your Christian experience and rob you of the opportunity I don't care what it is and how long it has been in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ I pray that that life of pretense dies tonight and I pray for those of you who have been doing things both great and small for the kingdom grace to continue I pray specifically for all the workers in this house I want you to know that your contributions to advancing the kingdom the worship department the ushers one day you will see this record in heaven and the Lord will say this is what you did on earth for my kingdom and for those of us who are not serious with the house of God nor the things of God who are just careless there is no kind of commitment that you have you don't give for in the house of God you don't pray you don't support the cause of the kingdom I pray tonight that God will speak to you and that for the first time for some of us you will say enough of lukewarm Christianity it's time to plunge in and commit myself truly in the name of Jesus Christ for some of you who have been wounded on account of the gospel you have been misunderstood on account of the gospel I pray for you there is a balm in Gilead there are some of us who have been persecuted because of the gospel you have been blackmailed because of your Christian integrity I speak to you do not give up a day of reward is coming there is one who is called the rewarder of them that diligently seek him you are suffering financially today if only you compromise on your Christian integrity that man would have given you money now the money is not there but he's telling you on you I want you to know that the Lord is proud of you he is watching a day of reward and recompense is coming it's coming it's coming beauty that makes this whole earth adore you home spent with you we'll just sing this song once here I am to here I am to One more time. Here I am.
the message for you tonight is to live with eternity in view whatever you need to do to remind yourself I want you to remind yourself life does not end here life does, I want this is the message to you the personal word of the Lord to you that there is more live your life knowing that you will give account of it don't live your life as if you own your, yourself live your life as you joke as you play huh? as you go around your normal activity remind yourself that a day is coming when all that we see today will be no more let it not scare you but it serves as a buffer solution it will check balance excesses in your life and it will keep you hot for the kingdom hearing is my father glorified give it to us again that you bear much fruit results you know many people say results don't matter it's a joke what else is the is the yardstick if results don't matter what else don't you know that even loving God and knowing God is results right the dear lady shared a testimony of a brother who was drinking and smoking anything available and now all of a sudden the guy is madly in love with God that's transformation that's results if he goes back to his friends and they say can you taste it as usual he said no 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 i'm a changed person it's not the issue of temptation i am changed transformed by a reality are we together when people who have concluded about you and said sam you will never rise and all of a sudden you rise like an edifice and they say everybody from your village does not rise and all of a sudden you rise pastor alpha ah you won't go anywhere listen do you know I love the way God is. He will allow your enemies to finish talking. Then he'll say, let's start proving them wrong. One by one by one by one. That's what God is doing to someone who has carried his big mouth to talk against your God. In this year of triumph, God will surprise them. Do you know? Listen, there are people who scorn at believers happily. Every time they see people loving God, they sit down and discuss them. And to a point that some of you are embarrassed, your phone rings, it's a Christian ringtone, you, you, you off it quickly because you, you don't want to shame this God who is disappointing you. My God, the Bible says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like what? Damn. It will be like a dream. He will say, no, 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 no. Which promise? Which promise are you talking about? They said the one you know. He said, no, no, you are, you are joking. Because people stratify us and keep us at a level and don't want us to rise so that their prophecy will be self-fulfilling. But then when the God of heaven is ready to pick people up, you know, I was blessed by the testimony of a gentleman. I don't know if he's here, the guy in Kogi that got a job. What a blessed testimony. All of a sudden, God just changed his story. Look at the lady that God healed of HIV. I know some of you think it's a lie. This is what we are trying to destroy because if how else do you want to even carry the healing anointing? If you are still calculating the physics behind the healing of whatever, how did A and B become C? You are not a Christian because the Bible said, my sheep hear my voice. The voice of another, they will not hear. This is what makes people to carry news all around thinking every man of god is faking miracles because according to their understanding issue they will not directly come and say we don't believe it but the miracle will happen right before their eyes and they say no 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 it, let's let's verify when the devil afflicts you you don't verify it at once you believe it people come and say satan spoke to me he said go and kill yourself why didn't you call us for verification but when god speaks now people you know it just tells you the mindset of people how much people do not believe god please tonight be a believer be a believer don't just stand up don't just lift up hands to receive as though um let's see if god will know 
God will change your story and beat you beyond your imagination. Hallelujah. One of the things God told me will happen tonight is a dramatic outpouring of the mantle of favor. I've been praying. Do you know? Listen. Do you know? I, I don't share too much of my personal experiences. But I prayed for one year for the ministry of the gift of men. One year. One year. Lord, send strategic people to my life. Koinonia is blessed to have men. Look, we are going to pray for the gift of men. You hear me say this thing all the time. If a man does not show up in your life, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. Or if the wrong person shows up, it's still the same thing as, as breakthrough not coming because it will not move your life forward. One man showing up in your life can say, David, damn, come. I, I just feel like blessing you. You sang a song and I had and I want to bless you. What does it take to produce your album? Ah, oh, sir, to produce one song in Lagos is 250,000. He say, okay, how many tracks do you have? 10. And then you are there thinking the man is like you and he's listening to you. When you finish, he now says, this is a check of 4 million naira. Please, when you do everything, let me know. And then you leave the man and say, so what is the catch? He said, there is no catch. When it is favor, there is no catch. God will just surprise you and leave you like that. Somebody will just build a house. It's called prepared blessings. See, if you don't believe in what I'm telling you, you can go home, honestly, because this is what we are going to deal with tonight. Triumph. Thanks be to God who causes us always, always, always to triumph. Always to triumph. That you come for koinonia empty-handed and as soon as the service is over, someone walks to you and says, I don't know you, but God sent me into your life. To say from now till September, every month I should be giving you 20,000. You don't believe it can happen? I hear you are five in your family and your dad is dead. Your mom is dead. From today, I become a father in this family. Simple. For starters, move out of this place into a two-bedroom flat. Look, let me tell you something. It's called quantum leap. I'm trusting that God will take us into this dimension. David, you will do a little experiment. Eh? You will take three steps and then you will jump forward like a frog. Ready? Now, watch. Let me show you the difference between progress and a quantum leap. Are you ready? This is progress. Two, three. Now, jump. This is a quantum leap. I know it's a little analogy, but see if you if there is no provision like this your lifetime is too small for you to be successful at the rate humans move you will never build a house till you die at the rate your salary is being paid you will never do anything useful at the rate church services are held you will never know god with the amount of the sermons you need a quantum leap i have witnessed it in my life many people here are witnesses of it where god will just all of a sudden change somebody's story i tell you i feel the anointing as i'm saying this this is what many of us need tonight a quantum leap this issue of moving here and there okay thank god you are now employed you are earning forty thousand. let's be sincere let's be sincere in the name of jesus christ who died and rose again in how many years will forty thousand build a house for you now i know many people say it does not matter it matters to any responsible person how much does it take to marry forty thousand the auditorium is how much how much does it take to a child's school fees a child's school fees right now a child who cannot talk the school fees is hundred hundred and something thousand to just teach them how to play and you plan to have five you better listen to what i'm telling you this is why people are, are depressed depressed someone is driving and talking to himself till he dies till he dies because of depression we need a quantum leap Where the grace of God comes upon your life. Divine acceleration. Triumph. Triumph. Shaka Pataya. Triumph. By the Spirit. There are ministries that need quantum leaps. If all you do 
is to invite members through posters let me tell you the truth get set for empty pews please help those under the anointing are you hearing what i'm saying if all you want to do in life is to move like men men i'm ready more than ever let me tell you it's like a flight i've been having an interesting experience with the holy spirit in the last two three weeks my goodness is is a is is a preparation for a quantum leap this man you see has gone no I'm, I'm i'm only saying you better believe god than arise don't let anybody tell you don't listen to him run away from them they won't help you when you are in trouble you'll be surprised to see how the vicissitudes of life will distract you all these problems we are solving is to give us space to pursue our assignment not to build a house for building sake not to buy a car for buying a car sake not to eat well for whatever it is so that if you decide to lock yourself in your house to worship god for 24 hours nobody will call you and say why are you worshiping god you can't be in church and someone calls you and says you better come and on the machine on which machine you move mountains you cause walls to fall and with your power you perform miracles there is nothing that's impossible and we're standing here only because for you move mountains you cause walls to fall and with your power you perform miracles there is nothing that's impossible and we're standing here only because you can listen brothers let me talk to you do you know right now please come when you see a gentleman like this do you know if this gentleman is successful many elders will ask him what are you doing in other words how come your life is this fast society has made people's growth rate so slow if you buy a car at 45 they say wow wonderful you are responsible but you buy a car at 22 and see people say you're a witch if they see a young man succeed you see everybody saying uh -uh, at this life two plus two it doesn't add up god wants to accelerate the kingdom the coming of jesus is near there is a lot we must do for the kingdom listen you can't spend your life looking for money it's a cost it's a cost it's a cost to spend your life looking for what to eat and what to drink you will never serve god that way pray eight hours when you are hungry you are joking you may endure but your children will not endure listen hold on please i want you to pay attention to what i'm telling you you see me preaching from my heart otherwise we'll keep playing games and at the end many christians will backslide pastor jakes they will leave god how many believers do you know who are not standing again because the reality of life we said this thing many years people insulted us and said we're noisemakers those people today some of them are not born again they are not even in christ again they've gotten into all kinds of things survival is a cause you should resolve that issue and spend your life serving god if you are a brother here when i say pray please pray pray the sisters can join but brothers you must pray you shouldn't stand and just be leave any man of god thing and cry listen there are some of you as you are listening to me right now there are seven siblings or six who are waiting for you to take care of them you have your own mother you have your own father and I, how are you going to live that's the cause of depression and then god calls you into ministry no job you want to marry you want to move forward you, you must be a joker you must access another mystery brothers and sisters you must trust god for a quantum leap tonight there is a grace there is a grace the name is a grace there is an unction that helps men and expedites their process in life the climate is too harsh for an average young man the probability for establishment is is almost like passing through the eye of a needle 
the factors are too many and we're standing here only because you and we're standing here only because you made a way made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked the if it was over you made a way hallelujah there are people here listen home and abroad their entire families are earning 200,000 but every week they are doing physiotherapy and chemotherapy for someone I heard of a woman 70,000 naira every week God is my witness they spend on is it physiotherapy or chemotherapy or something like that and there is no guarantee the person you see how the devil works until all your money finishes then the person will now die peacefully and leave you with trouble how many of you right now nobody to help you in your life lift your voice in one minute and cry cry for the help of god please koinonia pray pray hallelujah 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 prayer point number two listen listen i want us to break out of circles tonight are we together i'm going to minister to you but there are people here you are seeing the patterns of your families reproducing themselves in your life nobody rises beyond the level go to school or not It's a pattern you must break don't watch it happen and say it's all right nothing solves itself by itself you must engage it with faith lord this poverty thing i've seen it in my family we are not lazy people but i'm seeing it come this lack of being serious with god lift your voice and break every cycle lift your voice and command accept yourself Accept yourself. Are you praying? Hallelujah. Listen. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen to me. Listen. Listen. There are people you see who never last in marriage three years no matter what happens maximum three years one nonsense must happen and scatter the marriage are we together there are some of you listen the mysteries that destroy your family is men keep cheating you whether in business whether anytime there is wickedness you are the only one it happens to it's not a coincidence 
when they want to scam someone you are the first they find when accident is about to happen is when you are crossing the road the car will hit your leg i'd like you to pray and say no more i insist i've been keeping quiet about this but tonight i place a demand lift your voice no more no more no more it shall come to pass in that day that the burden shall be taken from off your shoulder the yoke from off your neck and it shall be destroyed because of the anointing hallelujah hallelujah two more prayer points before i begin to minister to us listen hallelujah jesus said satan come to me and does not find anything of himself if satan finds what belongs to him in you he's authorized to destroy you we are going to pray and we are going to say lord whatever legal access the devil has over my life and destiny i apply the blood i invoke the mystery of the blood lift your voice and pray legal access i apply the blood are you praying I apply the blood that speaketh better things than the blood of Abel. I apply the blood. I apply the blood. I apply the blood. I apply the blood on my children. I apply the blood. Pray on my husband, on my wife, on my business, on my ministry, on my job. I apply the blood. No divination, no witchcraft, no enchantment arising against my life shall prevail. Hallelujah. Please keep standing. Keep standing, everyone. We are going to pray now. I tell you, I'm angry in my spirit. Luke 18, verse 1. Please, quickly. Luke 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable. Luke 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Verse 2. There's something I'm looking for. Saying, there was in a city a judge, which feared not God, neither regarded man. Verse 3. And there was a widow in that city. And she came to him saying, Avenge me of my adversary. Stop there. God is a God of vengeance. Listen, listen. I know that's the nasty side of God. But the God I serve is not only merciful. God, is, there are people who don't need mercy. They need vengeance. You don't pray if you don't believe it but let me tell you something there is a god of vengeance he said let god arise and let all his enemies be scattered lift your voice and cry lord avenge i cry for your vengeance over the works of darkness in my life my family koinonia pray arise righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne oh god of vengeance arise oh god of vengeance arise against the wicked oh god of vengeance arise oh god of vengeance arise against evil doers Arise against them that seek to feed on the flesh of your people.
Hallelujah. Listen. There was a man in the book of Esther called Haman. Have you heard about Haman? That man was conspiring to destroy the agenda of God. Not just the Jews. The agenda of God. The apple of his eyes. And then the Bible says through a lot of activities. When that plot was gotten, the king sent. And he said they should go and hang him. He already built a gallow in advance. In advance. We live in a wicked world, brothers and sisters. Let me tell you. It's not all about vengeance, but there is a dimension of it that is necessary. If you must break through, the wickedness of men is beyond imagination. You are going to pray it again. Lord, there are powers that have tied down my life and my family. Arise, O God of vengeance. Arise, O God of vengeance. Arise, O God of vengeance. hallelujah hallelujah listen listen i was told the story of a woman pastor jakes married a man that god had blessed and then the man died as soon as the man died strangers came from left right and center and told her you have no inheritance in this they stripped that woman to the last of everything banished her and her children to go men they will smile at you and talk against you in the secret and hope for tragedy to come upon your life so that they will rejoice in your pain no you rejoice in my pain the god of vengeance will arise for you i tell you only a wicked man will see someone in pain and rejoice over it he said rejoice not over me my enemies though i fall yet i will rise again how many of our parents were betrayed by their best friends they lost their job because of someone they knew was the person who signed the check sign them off say destroy them the bible says a man's enemies listen 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 koinonia i know many of us are young people but let me tell you when you become a leader or when you become one who is in any position of responsibility you will appreciate this prayer there are men who will kill you and bury you smiling they will kill you and bury you smiling when judas came to kiss jesus a kiss is a sign of love correct yet a man used that sign of love as a symbol to an enemy this is the guy this is how you will kill him how many people kissed you into your suffering today They kissed you with a stupid advice. And that's, that's what has landed your life today. They told you, stop tithing. These men of God are crooks. They have destroyed your life. Are we together? Tonight, I want us to engage the word. To engage the word with your spirit. If you insist, brothers and sisters, God will give you a breakthrough. If you insist, God will give you a breakthrough. Are we together now? I want you to pray one last prayer. And then I'll begin to minister by the Spirit. Lord, visit the root cause of my challenges. I may not know what it is. I only know the effect. Oh God, go to the root. It says every tree, the axe is placed at the root. Every tree my father has not planted. Lord, go to the root cause of the barrenness in my life. The root cause as to why finances cannot stay in my hands. The root cause. Are you praying?
Alléluia. Alléluia. Listen. If after tonight's meeting, you return with a testimony, nobody will ask you to run to the house of God. You will go by yourself. Do you know how many, why many people never seek God? The truth is they are tired of lack of results. They are tired of it jumping around doing all kinds of things yes you don't love god just for results but you've heard me say it again at a point in your christian experience results must come as consolations to your serving god visit us tonight in the mighty name of jesus visit us tonight in the mighty name of jesus visit us tonight in the mighty name of jesus visit us tonight let me make an altar call let's start with the altar call first so that we'll finish right now please everyone standing no moving around outside your attention there are people right here everything we boast of is in christ if you are not in christ there is no guarantee please listen very carefully if you are not in christ there is no guarantee whatsoever are we together now so you are here we are talking about witchcraft you have joined us to pray congratulations but nothing will happen to you until there is a translation because when a man is not in christ the bible says he's in the kingdom of darkness the very domain of darkness are we together now so when that prayer of salvation is offered in faith there is a spiritual transfer it is only on that basis you can challenge darkness there are two cate categories of people very quickly i'm going to make the altar call quickly when you come pastor jakes will lead you in prayer and then we'll take over and fly tonight and trust god to take us to a realm where we will never return never return to this level in the name of jesus you are here and you are saying man of god is as if you are just prophesying to me you are right it's you i'm speaking to and i'm going to make an altar call one maybe two three minutes wherever you are outside i know there are lots of people you are saying man of god can god forgive me yes he can can god give me a new beginning absolutely no one has made it in my family you will be the first if and only you receive him he says as many as believed in him even to them that i mean as many as received him even to them that believed in him he gave them power to become power to become you do not have the power but you have the will and you can choose right now i'm going to make an altar call whether you are giving your heart to jesus for the first time or you want to rededicate your life man of god i gave my life to christ but somehow things have gone haywire no problem you are welcome if you are outside run like there's fire on the mountain any of the overflows you are inside here you run out i will count one to five very quickly one run like there's fire on the mountain if you are thinking about it go back to your seat give jesus praise please clear the way for them there are people running outside let jesus christ step into your destiny koinonia can you motivate them appreciate them as they come don't let any friend tell you why you disgracing yourself shame the devil over your life tonight god bless you keep coming man of god you don't know what i've done just make that step of faith and come quickly run to jesus run to jesus keep coming keep coming there are still more people there are still more people if you came with a friend and he's trying to stop you leave him alone and come run to jesus Every one of us in front, can you just lift up your hands? Lifting up your hands is a sign of surrender. Are you following? Please just lift up your hands and pray this prayer sincerely from your heart. Jesus loves you. I want you to understand that. Just say, dear Lord Jesus, 
Say it out loud. I want to hear you speak. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come before you. I ask for forgiveness for my sins. I believe in the power of your blood. I believe in the power of your salvation. Forgive me of for all my sins. Thank you for new life. Thank you for newness in Christ Jesus. From today, I'm a child of God. I'm born again. My spirit is new. My heart is new before God. In the name of Jesus. Still lift up your hands while I quickly pray for you. Father, thank you for these precious ones. Thank you for the power of your blood. My Father, I ask even as their hands are lifted up, let your love, Lord, descend upon them. I ask that, Lord, the love of God will permit, the love of Christ will be shed abroad in their hearts by the Holy Ghost. Thank you for their lives, God. Thank you for writing their names in the Lamb's book of life. We give you praise. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that indwells them now. Thank you for the Holy Spirit helping them to walk in your ways, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you for your glory upon them, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Please just look at me. Just moment you turn, just in between the aisle, just you'll see somebody waving behind you. Please just follow him. We'd like to get your name, okay? Your name and some of your contact to get to pray with you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Precious saints, can we celebrate Jesus for this? Can we put our hands together and celebrate Jesus? Celebrate them. Congratulations. Congratulations. God bless you. Please, let's attend to them quickly so that they can come. We're about to pray now. Hallelujah. We're about to pray. Before we pray, let me talk to two people. There's one inside, one outside that God is visiting their family. There's a mighty anointing that will come on them. One sister a sister or so someone inside and someone in the overflow outside the power of god is going to come on that person now god is bringing a strange deliverance i'm seeing a strange deliverance bring the person one inside one outside i just want to speak to them please quickly we have a lot to do tonight and we want to conserve time Lift your hands. I want to pray. Just bring the people. Father, end witchcraft now in her life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare that the reign of darkness is over. Bring this lady for me. Free now by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Free. I'm going to pray for you. There will be a mighty deliverance right now. Listen, what is deliverance? Deliverance is not crying and rolling on the floor. Deliverance is by the power of God separating you from the spirits and the influences that are responsible for the challenges in your life. I'm going to pray for you. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. I'm already seeing in the spirit. Mighty. Especially today, God is visiting visitors. If you are here for the first time, God is visiting Visit us in a very strange way. Lift your hands. Don't say anything. Just lift your hands. Just keep your hands lifted. Please bring them. Just keep your hands lifted. Keep your hands lifted. God is touching people. It's a foolish instruction, but it's what the Lord is telling me. Just keep your hands lifted. Like fire. It's coming on people inside and outside. Bring them out. God is visiting visitors. 
visitors. Visitors. Doesn't mean other people are not being touched. But particularly visitors. Father, spare not your hand. Spare not your hand. Spare not your hand. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me pray now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm praying. There are men and women here right now under strange influences that has tied their lives, their destinies, in the name that is above all names whoever under the sound of my voice inside and outside if there is any spirit motivating the tragedies in your life as we shout that name jesus there will be an eruption of fire in this place and all of a sudden god will begin ministering to people are you ready now at the count of three one two they must go from their hiding place. They must depart from their hiding place. They must depart from their hiding place. At the sound of his voice, I command every spirit. I command every devil. Strange spirits tying down the destinies of men. I command you right now. There is mighty deliverance happening in the overflows outside. Mighty deliverance happening in the overflows outside. The power of witchcraft being broken. Being broken. Being broken. God is addressing issues of oppression. Oppression. Shakataya. It must end now. It must come to an end now. It must come to an end now. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a handwriting and I'm seeing setback and then slash delay. That's what God wants to deal with right now. God wants to deal with it. You don't need to know whether you belong to the category. The fire of God will locate you right now. Father, I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost, anyone under the sound of my voice, shakata bakata, under the yoke of setbacks, whether you are a visitor, whether you've been here for a long time, in the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to leave you now. I command that spirit to leave you now. The power of God is touching people. Delay, 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 delay. You are a strange spirit. I curse you by the God of heaven. Delay in destiny. Delay in achievement. that spirit I cost that spirit I cost that spirit bring the mommy out there's a mighty deliverance happening to her delay over your family broken 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 by the spirit Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
the lord is giving me a strange instruction please sisters lay your hands on your womb lay your hands on your stomach something remarkable is going to happen here right now there is a kind of deliverance god is doing i don't know what i'm even doing but lord i pray right now this is not for everybody but i am seeing the lord is instructing that they lay their hands and i'm going to pray a prayer for you you'll be surprised every stranger hiding in any sister's body that is responsible for the manipulation of their destinies in the name of jesus by this prophetic instruction at the count of three release them now one two three release them now 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 Johnson Johnson I'm hearing a name Johnson 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 we are still praying please Johnson my God I tell you I see this fire falling on sisters I don't know what it is with ladies God is God is ministering a serious deliverance to ladies serious deliverance to ladies hallelujah hallelujah you are here in this place listen you never rise beyond a certain level it's not that you don't start please listen carefully i'm speaking by the spirit the moment is like there is a spiritual embargo you get to that height you must crash down wherever you are i'm prophesying now and i'm praying for you the power of God is looking for those people. The power of God is looking for those people. You rise to a level and fall. You rise to a level and fall. Lord, in the name of Jesus. Inside and outside, wherever you are, I release that fire like a messenger to your life. Like a messenger to your life. I cause that witchcraft now i cast that witchcraft now hallelujah the lord is showing me a vision my god hold on i'm seeing deliverance for children like little children the power of god is coming on small children in this place I'm seeing children being delivered. Some initiated into occultism. Some initiated into this. Let's just walk the way God is. Father, in the name of Jesus, I speak to every little child in this place who is a victim of any satanic manipulation. Wherever they are, don't be surprised if you see little children manifesting. Now, wherever they are, inside and outside, I'm prophesying that the spirits symbols just the symbols please. right now wherever the children are i'm prophesying that the power of god will touch them touch them i set them free from activities of witchcraft occultism any kind of initiation if there is any little child here under any yoke of bondage i set them free now I set them free now hallelujah hallelujah my friend lift your hands that gentleman going tap him hi there is hardship in your family and the Lord is asking me to cause it right now in the name of Jesus I cause hardship 
let the anointing of the spirit come on you now i curse that spirit the spirit of hardship i curse you now i curse you now i curse you now in the name of jesus christ hallelujah listen if you are here and you have any blood disease just blood disease any kind any kind blood related issue lay your hand on your chest i want to pray for you right now blood related issue genotype whatever it is um, or any kind of thing maybe any sickness that is blood related please i want to pray for you right now the lord is giving me that instruction very quickly i want to pray for you i'm seeing a lady who is as god is about to change her genotype now 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 a dramatic change of genotype from as to ss from as to aa by the spirit by the spirit by the spirit hallelujah hallelujah please if you come from a family where no one in your family is working lift your hands nobody no job nobody just please just do what i'm asking you to do let's save time just lift your hands nobody at all is working no matter what happens just lift your hands i want to pray for you lift your hands i want to pray for you jesus 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 i'm i'm looking at hands lifted and and for some of the hands i'm seeing like a rope this is not necessarily you this is a representation of your family and i want to pray for you in the name of jesus i stretch my hands get ready for the power of god right now wherever you are even those who didn't lift their hands i decree and declare that that yoke of joblessness comes under attack right now right now right now right now right now i release them i release them i release their jobs i release their jobs by the power of the holy ghost 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 we end joblessness here right now right now in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah the spirit of revelation is coming on 17 people one seven one seven one seven at the count of four this is the instruction god gives me unusual access to illumination lord where are they inside and outside one two three strange illumination four take it now take it now the spirit of revelation uncommon access to the secrets of the kingdom uncommon access 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 i release it in the spirit access 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 hallelujah please make sure you receive every word that is coming every word come god is going to use you come come and stand here lift your hands stand up in the name of jesus i don't know you huh but an anointing will come upon your life today and god is going to change your life like day and night receive that grace right now strange grace step into that dimension that dimension there are impartations going on now let's just receive the impartations impartations not healings not healings impartations impartations i release the gifts of the spirit right now right now i release the gifts of the spirit lord stir up the fountain stir up the waters stir up the waters i release the gifts of the spirit strange gifts strange gifts 
strange manifestations of power, of power, healing anointings, healing anointings. I activate healing anointings right now. Healing anointings. Step into it. Step into it. Outside, inside. Step into it. God is releasing mantles, mantles of healing, ancient mantles of healing ancient mantles grace for barrenness grace for barrenness grace for barrenness healing barren cases hallelujah hold on i'm still praying i'm still praying god wants to release the healing anointing let's just stay here with this healing thing God wants to release. There are many more people. I'm not seeing them receive it yet. Father, you want to release this grace. There is such a grace as a healing anointing. I pray for you right now. In the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands inside and outside like a tornado. May the power of God come on you now. Everyone, everyone, everywhere, men, women, take it. Take it, take it, fire upon your spirit. Hello, Himadon, I, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, Himadon, I, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hello, Himadon, I, I don't know how we are going to manage this now ushers there is a prophecy for you the lord says i should tell you from now as you hold people and as you shake them there will be a transference on every one usher i'm prophesying now that's why i say i don't know what we'll do ushers ushers receive that mantle receive that mantle a strange healing grace coming on our ushers supernatural supernatural the unction take it take it where you are let that fire come upon you upon ushers in a strange way upon ushers in a strange way the grace for the miraculous no longer will you just hold people no longer will you just welcome people as you clean the seats you release strange mantles. Hallelujah. We'll soon pray for the sick. But please everyone lift your hands. Lift your hands. I want to pray. I'm seeing people here. The anointing for business and entrepreneurship. Just keep your hands. That's why, please keep your hands. I want to pray for you. Don't say I'm not calling to a businessman. That's none of your business. Just listen to what I'm saying. I want to pray for you. It's a grace. It's a grace. I believe maybe in the course of the service, we'll call a Jimmy here to just prophesy that grace and release it truly, truly upon your life. Lift your hands. Brothers and sisters, there is a grace for the marketplace. You don't go there through desire. It's not that you are a, mon a money monger, you just go, but strange ideas strange insight do you know i'm seeing a number four and one 41 this will affect many people inside and outside whether you're a businessman or not it's not what i'm asking you that grace will locate you where you are a grace for the marketplace lord in the name of jesus inside and outside all the overflows online anyone here who must step into that grace whether you know anything about the marketplace or not take that grace now take that grace now i release it supernatural access 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 to business strategies 
access to ideas. Take it right now. Receive it, receive it. It's coming on people. Receive it, receive it. Receive it, it's coming on you. So that you will go and prosper. 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 There is a woman, one of our mothers, this grace that I'm talking about is coming on you now. Now. One of our mothers, one of our mothers is receiving that grace. God is releasing that grace. Whether you are inside or outside, whoever it is, I release that grace now. There is a woman I'm seeing in the spirit. You must take that grace now. You must take that grace now. Uncommon ability. Uncommon ability. Uncommon insight. For the works of your hands to begin to produce fruits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Look at me. Please help them. How many of you are trusting God to restore something that has left your life? It can be anything. How many of you are trusting God? I want to release that grace now. And I want you to believe it. Some of you had destiny help us. But something happened and they left your life. Some of you had quality relationships. But it left your life. Some of you had finances. But it left your life. Some of you even had certain levels of graces. The Lord is asking me to prophesy restoration Kai, this is going to land on people's head i'm seeing this thing there are physical gifts you used to see in your life not gifts of the spirit not just gifts of the spirit gifts gifts endowments for some reason it disappeared some of you are actually worshippers singers but that grace left is coming back is coming back Kapataya. I invoke the grace that he has put upon my life. I prophesy strange restoration. I call it by name and I command it back to your life. I call it by name. Everything you once were that you now are not, I command you to become it now. I command you to become it now. I release that grace. I release that grace receive it I release that grace I release that grace hallelujah now listen listen there are some of us hear me you have been doing certain things but the anointing for what you are doing has not yet come on your life this is a very serious prayer I want to pray for you you have been doing business with the brain of a money monger but not the grace for the marketplace you have been singing only with the voice of a musician but not the spirit of david i want to release the anointing of your office the anointing that has to do with your function please i want you to believe what i'm praying hear me hear me hear me it's one thing david was anointed to step into his office are you anointed for what you are doing i know you are working you want promotion is there an unction you are working with or are you just working with certificate at the count of three i want you to shout jesus there will be distribution of graces it's like an alignment the anointing the oil of your call the oil of what you are doing is about to locate you father in the name of jesus i pray right now whoever is functioning without an anointing functioning without the oil i stand upon this ground and i prophesy at the count of three may the grace that will distinguish you come upon you get ready now one one two two three receive that grace now take it take it grace 
grace grace for your academics grace for the ministry grace the words you speak turns things around help me The chains are gone that held me back. Oh, so Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please. I'm seeing something happening here right now. There are people who are receiving grace for speed. And they will start running physically. Hold them. Hold them so they don't injure people. I release the grace. You won't control yourself. Physically. Running. Speed. Physically. I release that grace now. Receive grace for speed. Receive grace for speed. Right now, right now, I command you to run. Run in the spirit. Catch up, catch up, catch up by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, I release speed. I release speed. I release speed. Speed to your life. Speed to your destiny. Speed to your life. Speed to your destiny. Your life, speak to your destiny. The words you speak, the things around your arms. Run like Elijah. Run like Elijah. You took away the chain. Much more than I desire. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are going to pray for the sick now. Listen. Please. Three things. Let me just give three instructions. Hold on please everyone. The worship team will continue right now. Now we are going to be very fast about this number one. Number two. Please. If you have not written your prayer request or the ones of your loved ones please i permit you put on your phone and call them tell them to send it as a text message write it we are going to be praying here tonight and we're going to be asking the fire of god to fall on request don't assume if you have not written it no problem settle down think well and write you are here you are trusting god for healing i understand there are a few sick people that they brought around please we're going to do it this way if your case is very sensitive then you can bring them to the front here but those outside please just walk to the um well there are a lot more people outside really well for those who can come in let's see but for those who may not make it you can walk to the front and then down there i'm here pastor jakes is here um we'll just station ourselves one one and then the other people will just support so that we can do it very fast praise god thank god pastor jakes is here and jimmy is here hallelujah praise god hold on so outside you can just walk at your various projector stands and stand there for those who have come in just allow them don't stop them let them come in that does not mean everybody will stream in please are we together 
if you're standing just stand trust god if they don't ask you what is wrong with you don't worry they just lay hands on you praise the lord Ejimi, please you help us Ejimi will be outside here and pastor jakes will be down outside there praise the lord benga you go with pastor jakes you will help pastor jakes outside um pastor alpha you'll be outside just help them and then um who, who is around again is Femi around okay so you can just come and help me here so let's do it that way very fast very very fast if there are more people there see promise is here michael is here so maybe you can add one okay promise just follow promise follow pastor jakes michael follow a jimmy please let's do it very very fast while hold on please don't be distracted don't cut the flow we are going to be very fast at this and we'll pray and then i'll speak over your life many miracles are happening even whilst you are seated don't be distracted i expect you to be writing your request and be praying in the spirit hallelujah for those stationed at different points whether at the back any of the overflows i'd like you to believe god for a miracle right now believe god for a miracle you can see someone like our daddy he has come with his crutch believing god to walk you believe you walk sir you believe the lord will heal you so get ready to walk you see there are people stationed around we are going to pray this will be very very fast and then the lord will help us in the name of jesus christ hallelujah father thank you let me start with our daddy first how long have you been like this sir six months stroke who brought him who came with our daddy you came by yourself sir came by myself by yourself from where sir was station here yeah. you cannot walk i can move with you this walking stick which but of the legs has a problem this is the leg this is stroke yes can you lift it no i can't i can't the hand i can't lift hold it. on look at this sir look at me you believe in jesus i believe you believe in the power of I jesus believe. lord i introduce your kingdom to this man's life right now in the name of jesus christ huh the lord will begin to touch you your hands everything is already dead sir lift your leg lift your leg just do what i'm asking you to do lift your leg just lift it lift your leg lift your leg start try to walk gently come Come, try to walk gently. Come, give me the stick. Look at me. Look at your stick. Come, come. come. Don't be afraid. Come. Lift your leg. Look at this. Look at what is happening to this man. Came with this stick. Look at this. 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 a chair and just keep him let him sit down while the power of god touches him sir you came here by yourself um trust him okay and the boy has gone okay he's somewhere in the name of jesus christ the god you believe has begun this miracle you will perfect it look for a stick for him there hold your stick by yourself and go don't put it on the ground hold it up walk by yourself and go give jesus praise look at what god is Heal now in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is destroying witchcraft in your life in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Someone is still sick here someone is still sick here i'm feeling the healing anointing pulling out from me someone 
one is still sick here. No, 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 no. Well, I'll pray for you. But I'm saying, I feel it within this vicinity from ministers' road down choir. Someone is sick. Come, let me pray for you. You came out. Lift your hands. Jesus. Someone is sick here. Someone has to be healed here now. Someone is sick here. I know when the anointing has released me to do something else. I still feel that someone is sick. Someone is sick. Someone is still sick. Lord, let that person be healed. This is a miracle service. This is a miracle service. This is a miracle service. Just this vicinity. I sense it's like, you know how someone is pulling your cloth. Jesus said, virtue has gone out of me. That's what I'm still feeling. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There's a gentleman here. Your elder brother has a case. I may not be able to mention the case. This is a health-related case. But this is a challenge with married people. This has affected. It's one of the worst things that can happen to a man in marriage. And the Lord is bringing a miracle right now. Right now. Elder brother. Supernatural miracle. It's coming to that person. By the power of the Holy Spirit. You are holding her but something is leaving her to you now you who is holding her something is leaving her to you there is there is virtue i see a transference of grace from a jimmy's wife to you you are doing your work as an usher but you have received something very strange and very powerful you see let me tell you something if if you do not you see hold on walking in the anointing is more than having it having the anointing is very different from being able to navigate the pathways of the anointing if not you will be anointed but you will not be able to dispense it fruitfully because you are just guessing it's like a man shooting anyhow you must have discernment many people think all it takes once you can speak and someone falls they say i am anointed what do you know about the anointing the anointing is more than releasing something mysterious to somebody it must accomplish something this you need more discernment than even the anointing the substance the ability to look at for instance like these people who have been touched now you are an anointed man of god you are finished praying you go to the next thing you see insensitivity in the spirit this is not guesswork if you are guessing you will not see the results like this it's not it's not guessing so please learn it i know that this is a place where we value the anointing and there are many of you you are waiting for me to prophesy release impartation after this now it's not it's not just about holding people ah hold this lady hold Mukhtar's wife an anointing is coming on her please hold her her and matter two of them there is i don't know what it is but i'm seeing i don't know why god is doing this thing Strange. God, God is giving two of them strange favor. Strange favor. I see strange favor. Strange favor. America, God is giving you access. I'm seeing you like a crown coming on your head. And God is saying He's giving you strange access. Strange access. Strange access. Strange access. Strange access. Muas, God is giving strange favor. Strange favor. Strange favor. Strange favor. Hallelujah. I don't know what I'm saying, but this is a word for someone. And the Lord is saying, why make it next year? when i have destined it to be this year why make it next year when i have destined it to be this year this is the word of the lord why make it next year this is a word for many people when i've destined it to be this year
as I speak to you, the word is for you. The power of God will locate you. Why make it next year when I have destiny to be this year? It's a year of triumph. It's a year of triumph. Why make it next year? Just allow me to do my stupidity. Why make it next year when I have destiny to be this year? Why make it next year when I have destiny to be this year? My God. Hallelujah. There is a lady here. You have been disappointed with God right now. You actually came help the ushers. You came expecting that I would directly call your case. And you, you, you prayed this thing. But now it looks like we're about to pray and I didn't call your case. The power of God is coming on you now. Now. As a sign that God had you. Now, wherever you are, he's locating you now. Now. I command that spirit to leave you. I see you in the spirit. Go now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I stretch my hands now and I command by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let her go now. Peace to your spirit. Every devil carries his nonsense and lives with you. Right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Pastor Jake is still praying outside. Okay, we can just do it. This is a listen. There are two moments in every miracle service you should not miss. Ah, there is, I mean, God is just doing certain things. It's like something is really happening. Don't worry about what is happening. Impartations. God, see, let me tell you right now, if the anointing comes on you. Just know that is the answer to your prayer. This is not a special once the anointing comes on you. Just know that your prayer has been answered. You understand? This is what it doesn't mean if the anointing, if you don't fall down, it's not answered. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying this is how God is choosing to confirm to some people now, as I'm talking, that your prayer, no matter how difficult it is, no matter how difficult your prayer is. Praise the Lord. Now, everyone, please stretch your hands here and pray in the Holy Ghost. Please, Pastor Jakes, come. What do you mean? Please, okay, he's writing something. Just stretch your hands here and pray. And pray in the Holy Ghost. Stretch your hands and pray in the Holy Ghost from the depth of your heart. Stretch your hands. Shakatopakata. Leketeketekete. Stretch your hands here and pray in the Holy Ghost. No, leave her. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Stretch your hands. Pray in the Holy Ghost. 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 Prophesy in the Holy Ghost. Shake it to go to to get a rakata kata bakata. So put to show peke te te te. Miracles, so God. Testimonies, so God. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders, signs and wonders, signs and wonders. We prophesy it, we prophesy it, we prophesy it, we prophesy it. Visit impossible situations. I tell you, God is moving. I see a cloud, I see a cloud over this prayer request. That's what I see in the spirit. God is moving upon it, moving upon it, moving upon it. The Spirit of God is moving over the prayer request, visiting families, releasing angels, releasing angels, visiting the request. I'm seeing the cloud of God's presence, visiting the prayer request. Savior, He can move a mountain. My God is mighty to save. 
Mighty and everlasting Father, Master of the Universe, the God that answers by fire. We receive answers by fire in the name of Jesus. Angels of God, are you not ministering spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? We receive angelic ministration and direct answers from heaven now in the name of Jesus. The heavens over these requests are open and answers come speedily in the name of Jesus. It has been decreed, it has been ratified. And it is done in the name of Jesus. Lord, we say thank you. Lord, we say thank you. We say thank you. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask, above all that we imagine, is done in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, Father. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we have decreed. Give Jesus praise. Give Jesus mighty praise. Hallelujah. Please, you may still come. Pastor Jake's come. I just feel like doing this is. I, I don't always do this, but I want to prophesy over your lives. And in the name of Jesus, they are my friends. But the Lord is telling me to speak over their lives. They are great men of God in power. But in the name of Jesus, the Lord is saying I should prophesy the next dimension. To prophesy a new level. And in the name of Jesus, I speak it. Step into a new dimension. A Jimmy, God is saying I should release grace for access. I command that grace. Strange access. Strange access. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Strange access. Gifted men coming into your life connections with gifted men in the name of jesus and pastor jakes god is giving you influence strange influence strange influence strange influence strange influence is a very strange apostolic dimension of influence lord i pray in the name of jesus that you will bless them wherever your wives are i bring them into this experience now 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 wherever they are i prophesy to tosin wherever she is and i speak to hope you are one so i prophesy as it happens to you i bring your wives into this experience in the name of jesus strange levels of access strange levels of access strange levels of influence hallelujah hallelujah let me do this just once i spotted lizzie somewhere one of the oldest year nine lady come she came in from abuja part of the founding people that started this ministry all the way and the lord is saying i should prophesy a release i told you about ladies who used to climb trees when this ministry started no money no nothing they were in welfare they were in worship team at the same time they would climb trees and pluck the firewood for cooking for us for the crusades and the lord is saying i should pray and prophesy and open up a new dimension that it is for her does not mean you cannot receive it you see the thing with prophecy is the moment there is hunger it will still land on your head praise the lord 
father in the name of jesus i lay my hands right now over lizzie and lord jesus i prophesy i prophesy according to the word that you are giving me i open up a new chapter a new chapter a new chapter shabaka toto barekete zat kaska paskata paskate pash legete to soto preteke skopari adabalaraba a new chapter a new chapter a new chapter a new chapter and as many who desire to drink of this grace a new chapter a new chapter a new chapter as many who desire to drink of this grace a new chapter in the name of jesus a new chapter listen i prophesy to you a new chapter by the power of the holy ghost hallelujah please lift your hands we're rounding up who is this girl come you god has chosen to visit you come come and stand here god is wiping your tears this prayer i'm praying for you will open the tulip gates of your destiny i lay my hands upon you and i command the gates to be open now I stood there and I saw you and the Lord said I should open that gate. I lay my hands upon you. I command the gates to be open. Be open right now. Be open right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be open right now. We're rounding up. We're rounding up. Please, this lady with uh, yellow, blue, you come. I don't know you but the Lord is asking me to pray for you lift your hands this is a real prayer to usher you into a strange realm of blessings I lay my hands and I remove the embargo from your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ I command uh -uh. I'm praying for you but I'm seeing my hand on you I'm praying for you but I'm seeing my hand on you Jesus, please visit them. Strange visitations. In the name of Jesus Christ. Strange visitations. Lift your hands, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah. I just saw a door open and I saw a name come out. Listen. I saw a name come out and I saw the Okalo family. The Okalo family. This is Okalo family. Okalo family. Okalo family. Okalo family. God is visiting your people. All three of you. Step into that grace. I open that door now. The Okalo family. Step into that grace. Open, 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 open. I open that door. An age long witchcraft broken over your family. An age long witchcraft broken over your family. An age long witchcraft broken over your family. I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus a dramatic restoration of everything that by the power of witchcraft has tied you down. Whatever has covered your glory, I speak it right now. In the name of Jesus, let it be open, open, open. I unveil your glory. I unveil your glory. I unveil your glory. Shaka ta ta ta. I unveil your glory. I unveil your glory. Tonight is a strange night. Please receive every prophetic word that I'm going to pray for you. Ah, just allow me to do one more thing. Ah. The Spirit of God, I have not seen this in a while. I'm now seeing the map of Nigeria and I see Benway State. The Spirit of God is going to Benway right now. Right now, touching people. You know how it happens when I speak. Benway, Benway, miracles. Locate them now, oh God. People from Benway, Benway, strange grace, 
strange grace. I break witchcraft, bad way. I'm seeing bad way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. I'm seeing, I know O to go, but I'm seeing the O, A. A at the, is there a place like that? O to bar or something. The power of God, I'm seeing that. Going to that area. The Lord is bringing a miracle. Ends with an A. Whoever comes from that region, in the name of Jesus, breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Strange breakthrough. Strange breakthrough. Benway. 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 I don't know why God is doing this, but I'm prophesying it. May the angel of the Lord's presence step into that place. Hallelujah. I'm seeing another name on the map. Emo. 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 Where are they, oh God? Emo. 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 Emo state. Emo state. The anointing of the spirit locates them now. Strangely. Matato Sotota. Emo state. Miracles. Miracles. Breakthroughs. Signs, wonders, miracles, miracles to emo states by the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. If you're from Cross River, Cross River, Calabar, something is happening right now. Cross river, cross river, cross river, cross river, help her, help her please. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands everyone. It's the ministry of signs and wonders. Let me talk to you, my dear. This lady looking at me. You, come. The Lord has located you today. Come. Lift your hands. The Lord says I should tell you for shame. He's bringing laughter to your life. 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 Lift your hands. We are rounding up. You've heard me say it again that this is the most powerful part of the service. I want you to believe it. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, the anointing flows through me to you. And I know when the anointing is heaviest. It's only because many of us are already used to some of these things. And so you think when these things are happening, you don't judge the anointing just by physical manifestations. I want to pray for you. Please receive everything I pray for you. Every age-long challenge every challenge that has refused to leave i prophesy upon it right now i command that it comes to an end in your life now 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 that fair lady come this lady time run come Lift your hands, I'm still praying. In the name of Jesus, listen. Whatever has brought shame and dishonor like a stigma to your life, I roll it away right now in the name of Jesus. I roll it away right now in the name of Jesus. I roll it away right now in the name of Jesus. I roll it away right now in the name of Jesus. My dear, look at me. I saw you inside a cave and I'm surprised because we've prayed for, for deliverance prayer. And I saw you inside a cave. You are just trying to push the door. That's why I asked you to come out. Let me, I don't know you. Do I know you? Where did you come from? Damagadi. Where? Damagadi to Kutuku. Where is that? I don't know. Here in Zaria. Yes. I'm going to pray for you. God is bringing a major breakthrough. Two things. God is going to throw somebody out of your life. I'm not a prophet of group, but it will happen. He will reach three days. Huh? Throw completely so that you can move forward. I hold your hands in the name of Jesus. Every deceiver of your destiny, 
we drive them far from you right now in the name of Jesus Christ you need to love Jesus with all your heart right you are a nice person but your relationship with Jesus you can, you can get teachings after this but I want to prophesy on your life God is taking somebody not there though just driving somebody out an unwanted person out of your life I prophesy the kind of favor you have never seen I lay my hands on you and I provoke the heavens to release that favor for you in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare over every family represented here whether your nuclear family your extended family hold on I don't know what has gone wrong but in the name of Jesus within now and miracle service match dramatic turnaround for families dramatic turnaround for families dramatic turnaround for families in the name of Jesus one of the mysteries responsible for open doors and new levels is the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers I want to pray for you I don't know where they are but one thing I know is they never come on their own. They are called by prophecy. I prophesy to the north. I prophesy to the south. I prophesy to the east. I prophesy to the west. The helper of your destiny. I command them to appear now. 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 Hallelujah. Come. Come and hold my hands. Congratulations. I'm seeing a job. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a very good job. And the Lord is saying I should congratulate you. Look at me. You will stand here and testify before the people of all the Holy Ghost said I should tell you is congratulations and I hold your hand in the name of Jesus Christ may it come to pass I decree and declare the results you have not had in 10 years put together in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God in one month 30 days I stand here under the unction of the Holy Ghost 30 days beginning from today step into those results step into those results ah, yeah, 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 yeah. step into those results step into those results strange dimensions of results hallelujah whoever has despised you whether to your knowing or not to your knowing I pray may God put them on the scene as he lifts you may they watch your rising as God honors you I pray for anyone here whose spiritual life has gone down prayer life down your praise and worship life down fasting down word life down in the name of Jesus Christ I activate fresh grace receive it fresh grace fresh fire outside receive it fresh grace fresh fire fresh grace hallelujah wherever your prosperity is I pray may listen listen Hagar carried Ishmael and they were roaming around the desert they said there was no water but when an angel appeared, all of a sudden they saw water. That you have not seen it does not mean it's, there, it's not there. I open your eyes to see where God has anointed to bring you financial blessings. I open your eyes in the name of Jesus. I open your eyes to see where God has placed your prosperity. Hallelujah. The plague of death that is looming around this nation looking for people and families is listen it's like a graph it rises then sometimes it relaxes i'm praying whoever calls your name i'm prophesying this oh whether in the secret or the open to invoke death upon your life i command the earth to open and swallow them 
I command the earth to open and swallow them. Whoever prophesies that it will not be well with you, may misery follow them. The Esther anointing, the unction and the grace that granted Esther uncommon access in the presence of Ahasuerus, Shababa Satalakata, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I release the Esther anointing upon your destiny right now. Take it. I release the Esther anointing upon your destiny. Hallelujah. Two more prayer points and we're done. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Many of us do not understand the mystery of spiritual defense and protection. Listen. I want to pray something that is very powerful in your life. Listen. When you are in trouble and there is nobody to show up for you, it's a cause. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The Bible says, defend you in the day of trouble. There are many of us, if for any reason things go wrong in your life, you are in trouble. There is nobody that can arise as a defense. But I'm prophesying to you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, whoever must arise and defend your cause in the presence of your helpers and in the presence of your persecutors, I call them forth right now. In the name of Jesus, may God raise men to be a wall of defense for you. In this wicked, um, wicked state that we are living right now in this country, people say if you don't have anybody, and honestly speaking, somebody can get up and come and seize your land. You and your land and your paper, they will collect it because there is no defense. I'm prophesying again. Quarter to shame. May God raise a defense for you. And finally, I want to pray the prayer of Jabez for you. Many of us, ha, many of us have not studied. Honor is not money. Listen, listen. There are many rich people with no honor. Are we together? There are many well-to-do people with no honor. Do you know what honor is? Honor is when God anoints men to lavishly discern and celebrate what you represent without reservation. So for every one person who talks nonsense, there are thousands. Honor. Jabez said, oh, the, the mother bore him in sorrow. You brought shame for me. So I call you Jabez. Honor is more than money, brothers and sisters. The Bible says a good name is better than riches. I pray the mantle of honor that by the grace of God has rested upon this ministry in the name that is above all names for as many who have the grace and the discernment to receive take that man to right now take that man to right now they don't have to know you but strangers will come to feed your flock receive that grace for honor hallelujah Wave your hands to Jesus and praise Him. Wave your hands to Jesus and praise Him. Wave your hands to Jesus and praise Him. Wave your hands. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. We lift our hands to the great I am. Who was and who Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like, 
this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye